Are you looking to increase your design skills and productivity? From sketching, surfacing, assemblies, and everything in between, our books have you covered. Purchase a paperback or PDF version in our store today. Well, hello everyone. Thanks for watching these videos. It's uh, quite a privilege to do this. And I realize that many of you who are watching these are working at some of the most amazing companies that ever existed. You're producing airplanes and prosthetics and automobiles, and it's just fantastic. So it is quite a privilege to uh, create these videos. Today's video is on a method that I've needed in, from time to time for tubing, filaments, um, all sorts of things that go are rooted from here to there. And uh, it starts with going and creating points. So there is an entity that um, not everybody knows about called the point entity that you can program, so to speak. So here's a point, and I'm going to call it point AA. <clears throat> and as you can see, the XYZ coordinates of it will be 0, 0, 0. And now I'm going to make another one that I'm going to call BB. And I have to go to the type and uh, click point there. And then I've got to enter the coordinates. So I'm imagining that there is a point that is uh, 10 uh, inches in the X and zero in the Y and zero in the Z. That's point BB. And uh, great. And now I'm going to create another point, CC. And uh, that's a point as well. Point. Okay. And this next one is going to be uh, 10X, 10Y. Like that. Simple, simple. And I'm going to create just a few more. There's DD. Point. Uh, this one is going to be X is 10, Y is 10, Z is 10. So we have 10. And sometimes in order to uh, do this, a better way is to uh, export this as a file, bring it into um, Notepad or whatever, and then edit it there because it's a little bit more convenient. Uh, EE. -E. I'll have one more point, which will be all the way out in left field. So it'll be point, point entity. Go where to go. There it goes. And this one's going to be X, 20, Y, 20, Z, 10. Okay, so I've got a number of points. And the cool thing is, um, every single point I make, I made, can be changed in its uh, location. They all show up in the user expressions. And now I'm going to actually create those points. In order to do so, you go to the curve function, and you do point, and you do point by expression. Simple, simple. And I'm going to create them sequentially. Here's AA. BB, CC, DD, and EE. And if I do a fit, I can see all the points. AA, BB, CC, ED, and EE. Great. And now I want a network of curves that go in between them. So some people might call this a way of 3D sketching. Now I've got to go to my uh, point selector and make sure that the existing point is on. And I'm going to go from this one to this one. Apply. This one to this one. Apply. This one to this one. Apply. And finally, this one to this one. All right. So now I have a network of curves that will definitely change uh, shape 
as I change the different point locations. So I've got AA, BB, CC, DD. So for example, here's the way it's shaped now. And if I go into the expressions editor with my classic control E move, and I go to, what did I say? A, B, C, D, 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 and I change it to, um, let's say, Z equals 20. Do that. And then when I say apply, you can see how the line follows. The lines follow, and it's really great. Control Z. So, um, Control Z. So that is uh, really powerful, the fact that I can have these curves drawn to these point locations. But if I were to make a tube with standard radius bends, I would want to now take these lines and do something really smart with them. Well, there is a command called a circular blend curve, but that is a little bit tedious if you've got a whole bunch of lines, because in order to put the blend between the lines, you have to select each line and type in the number. So there's another way to do it, and this is really amazing. So if you go to Composite Curve, Composite Curve, and you select all the curves sequentially, and what you're doing is combining them into one curve, I'm going to say here, join curves to, uh, let's say, cubic. I'm going to hide the original and say OK. So now what we're looking at is all one curve. You can see as I highlight it all turns red. But the problem is it has the sharp corners on it, and if I'm doing tube bending, I can't um, actually use sharp corners. So now the magic is there's this thing called smooth curve, smooth curve string. And what I can do is I can select that curve string and go to the settings, and um, where it says continuity, I can say, give me a G1 tangent continuity. And right here it says, add transition fillet. So this is a little known kind of um, entity or ability uh, in the smooth curve string uh, uh, module menu. And so as you can see, what it's doing now is it's going to change the curve with the sharp corners into it, into the, sharp, into the curve with the two inch uh, radius radii in there. And then, of course, there's a tolerance and there's a distance tolerance and all of that. Um, I certainly want this to be associative. And I say, okay. So now, as you can see, I've got this beautiful single curve with all the radii in it. And then finally, what I might do, what I might want to do, is put a curve on path like this sketch on path, and I can create a circle, and do this, so I can control the diameter of that circle, let's call it two inches, okay, and finish, and then finally I can do um, a surface swept, I could use sweep along a guide because in this case the guide string, uh, or I should say the section string, does not change as it goes along the guide string, but the swept function is usually the more powerful of the two. So I'm going to use swept, and I'm going to say select curve. This is the guide curve. The guide curve is, is that whole thing. Um, <clears throat> and as you can see, it's tapering, and it's tapering because I have a perimeter law that I was, used, that I was using on the last example. But if you want it to taper, you could use perimeter law, linear law. You could say start is one number, end is another number. In this case, it's one and six. And now you have a shape that would be not so easy to do in other ways. Uh, this was, as you could see, effortless. And of course, the beauty of this is if I want to change the location of one of the holes, I can say, oh, you know, I really wanted that to be um, 20. Say OK, and then that's going to totally change the shape of everything. So, you know, the fact that it is parametric is uh, really powerful, and it's the kind of functionality that I use all the time. It's the kind of functionality that's really um, 
this method is the combination of a number of tools, right? It's the point, uh, the parametric point uh, that a lot of people don't know about that you can get from the expressions editor. It's the line tool that goes from point to point. It's the combined, I'm sorry, it's the uh, composite curve function. And then last but not least, it's the smooth curve. And um, I think a method is very important. A method is a combination of curves that you do. Like if you're going to uh, do embossed lettering, you know, there's a few uh, entities that really support that when used in concert with each other. So anyway, thanks again for watching it. I know that, you know, if you're watching this video, you're probably an engineer with a lot of responsibility and very busy. And it's, um, I totally appreciate the fact that you might spend a few minutes with me. Um, thanks. Thanks for your comments. Please uh, uh, send me uh, questions of things you might want to see in the comments. Uh, interact because it certainly helps with the, um, with the acceptance of these and, and it helps further the channel along and like and subscribe, of course. Um, as I said, thank you very much. And of course, I'm making this during the holiday season. Have a wonderful holiday season. See, I'm all in my coveralls because I was painting. I'm catching up on lots of work that I don't do no during the normal year. Thanks again. Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries. It's quite a pleasure.